Hello and welcome to another Apathetic Podcast. I am your host, Mike Reeves, and welcome to Season 2 of the podcast. Um, no Carlos today, and I'm thinking probably no Carlos for the whole season just because we're going to be talking about things that, well, actually, we'll probably have some Carlos at some point in the season. But for the most part, we're going to be talking about some more political ideas here just because, you know, I'm getting a little tired of talking about my life and oh, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about my life, you know, I, and nobody cares about my little rant about dog owners that treat their dog like children. Nobody cares about that. So we're going to do some podcasts about stuff that people care about. And, you know, one of the most impactful and listened to topics of nowadays is politics. So we're going to start doing some political podcasts here. And I know that before I said I don't want to do political podcasts, but you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready for the hate. I don't really have a, I don't know, politically correct opinion on things. I'm ready for the hate. I'm ready for it. Yeah. So we're going to do some more political-based podcasts, stuff that are going to get people's boil, boil their blood, get their blood boiling, mm, yeah, get the little tingy, like, I feel warm, my brain feeling, yeah, I want you to feel like that when you're listening to my podcast, because at least it's something, some emotion, the other podcast, you didn't get really very much emotion out of it, so, today we're going to be talking about whether or not abortion should be legal, and of course, I have my opinion, other people have their opinion, if you think that my opinion is completely garbage, and you hate my opinion, you think that I am so stupid, I've construed the evidence, the facts are way off, I'm just being stupid, please tell me. Please tell me. Whether you're listening to this on YouTube, leave a comment. If you're listening to us on Spotify, leave a bad review, I don't care. If you want to get in contact with me, and if you want to be on the podcast, if you think that I completely destroyed abortion, thinking that I messed up the argument, I don't know what I'm talking about. Please hit me up on Instagram at the apathetic Revis or on Twitter. You just look up the apathetic Revis. You can find me on both Instagram and Twitter on those accounts. And please, please hit me up on those accounts and you will get a chance to be on the podcast. If you strongly disagree with me, I want to have professional debates about this topic and about any topic that I'm going to talk about in this season. I want to have professional debates about it. So please let me know if you think that I'm terrible terrible idea my opinion is just god awful please let me know and you will have a chance to be on the podcast and then we'll have a professional debate about it anyway today we're talking about should abortion be legal or not so i'm gonna kind of i'm gonna do the pro-abortion side i'm gonna do the anti-abortion side and then i'm gonna say my side what my opinion is so we'll start out with the pro-abortionists Pro-abortionists say that, you know, the baby is part of the woman's body. So the woman has the right to do with the baby, you know, whatever she wants. You know, if she just doesn't want to have an abortion, then she can... I'm uh, sorry. If she just doesn't want to have a baby, then she can just have an abortion. And, you know, it's, it's her body, her rights. And if she doesn't care about the baby because the baby's going to have some disability, it's going to have some autism, maybe on the spectrum somewhere, you know, something like that, or maybe, you know, they're just going to be born without arms and legs, it's just going to be a potato with a head sitting on the couch for the rest of its life, then, you know, what type of quality of life is that? Then you can, you can kill the baby, you know, that's, that's what poor abortionists believe. Anti-abortionists believe that the baby's a person and has human rights just like every other human, and that they should be entitled to the choice of life and to the hope of life and that they should have the ability to live because they're their own separate person and you know freedom for all right equality for all everybody gets equal rights in this country so then the baby has equal rights just like the mother has equal rights just like the father has equal rights just like how everybody has equal rights and now well that's basically the two sides i know i didn't get the whole i didn't get the whole of two sides um but th- those are the two sides i'm gonna say my opinions on this now because I have, a, I have a lot of opinions on this. It's going to be a very long opinion section of this podcast. So my opinion is that abortion, I think it's terrible. I think it's a bad idea. I don't really think, A, that it's moral. I know a lot of people don't care if it's moral or not, but I'm just going to say I don't think it's very moral. You know, It's not something that's very... I don't know what's the word. It's it's just not right. 
It's just not right. It makes me feel bad thinking about it, thinking about abortion. You know, people were going back into the ages of, I can kill who I want. And let's just say for a second, let's just argue against the, you know, it's a, it's a woman's body. Let's just argue against that. Let's say that it was a woman's body. I don't think that it is. I think that a baby is a separate body that the woman's carrying. It's a separate person, a different entity. But let's just say that for a second that the woman is carrying it. It's part of her body. <clears throat> I need some water here. Look, give me a second. I need to take a drink of water. I should edit this out, but I'm probably not going to because I'm lazy as frick. Oh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good drink. Mm -mm -mm. Tasty. Okay. All right. My bad. Probably won't edit that out. If I did edit that out, then congratulations, Micah. You did something with your life. But I'm probably not going to. Um, let's see, where was I? Uh, okay. Baby's part of a woman's body. Let's just say that a baby is part of a woman's body. Legally. Let's just say that it is. Let's say that everyone agrees that it is. If you have an arm that's perfectly healthy, can you cut it off? People are people are going to think something's wrong with you, and I'm pretty sure you're going to go into a mental institution if you cut off one of your limbs. That's perfectly fine. You know, let's say that your limb has gangrene, and it, it's terrible, and you have to cut it off. You know, and it it's it's going to kill you. So you got to cut it off. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's that's totally fine. You know. Your leg is going to kill you. You got to cut off your leg. You agree to cut off your leg? Yeah. Yeah. Let's say abortion is just the same. If you have a child that's going to die in the womb and you your life is at risk, the child's going to die anyway. And the only chance of you not dying is if you take the child out and it will save you. Fine. Yeah. That's called a medical emergency. Yeah. That's okay. But 90% of the time, abortions aren't like that. 90% of the time, it's some 16-year-old girl who slept with some dude that doesn't actually care about her. He convinced her to do some raw dogging and eat. His pull-out game is so weak. And uh, she, she got pregnant, and she doesn't want to have the baby. So she kills it. She goes to the school counselor. The school counselor's like... Oh, well, you know, we got to go to the abortion clinic real quick. We won't even tell your parents. You know, most of the time abortion happens, the parents don't even really know about it. It's done real quiet-like. Nobody has to know. You know, we don't want to hurt your feelings. So we'll, we'll, we'll kill the child. No one's going to know. Because it's part of your body. That's what they want you to think. You know, abortion was made to control population. You know, it wasn't really made because somebody doesn't want a child. It was originally made because they wanted to control population a little bit. Um, and if I, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of evidence to support that, but it makes sense, right? Well, people want to have a child because it's women's rights, and, you know, people aren't, they, people shouldn't have to deal with a child. People shouldn't have to deal with a child, what? What are we, what are we, going back to the slave days? People shouldn't have to deal with a child? That's like a white guy saying, I shouldn't have to send my kids in the same school as a black person. I shouldn't have to deal with the burden of that. That's exactly what you're saying when you say, I shouldn't have to deal with a child. There's things called adoption. You put your kid up for adoption. And then some people say, well, you know, my kid... Adoption clinics are terrible. You know, orphan homes, terrible places. Why don't you let the child decide? Uh, it's a person. It's going to be able to think it someday. Actually, kids can think all the time. It's going to be able to say its thoughts in words. It's going to be able to learn English, English. And it's going to, sorry, I shouldn't have said English. I'm so sorry. It's going to be able to learn English and it's going to be able to say its thoughts out. Why don't you let this, why don't you let the child decide for itself if it wants to live or not? I tell you what, you go to any three-year-old ever to ever exist ever. And you put them in a threatening, life-threatening situation. Are they going to Oh, sorry, I had a burp. Are they going to cry? Yeah, they're going to cry. Why? Because they want to live. If you ask a kid, do you want to kill yourself? Do you want to cease to exist? I'm going to take you on the barn right now with an axe. I'm going to cut your head off. They're going to cry. They're going to be upset. And they're not going to want that to happen. They're going to call for their mom or whoever. Why? 
because they want to live. Every three-year-old that has ever existed, ever, wants to live. Who are you to say, this child's going to have a terrible life, it doesn't want to live, let's just kill it now. Like, we, we prevent people from doing suicide. We prevent suicides. Don't do suicides. It's not cool. Don't kill yourself. It's a bad idea. But if your mom decides your life's not worth keeping, she can kill you. You know, like, what, what type of logic is that? What? Uh, what? Like, potato brain. What the frick? I'm not going to allow my child the ability to have life. Like, that is the ultimate denial of rights ever. Ever. That's even worse than slavery. And I'm not trying to be pro-slavery here. I hate slavery. It's a terrible decision. The fact that slavery was even allowed in any society, not just America. I'm not talking about American slavery. I'm talking about worldwide, everywhere. Slavery is bad. Always has been, always will be. But at least in slavery, they allowed the slaves to live. They're not just like, let's annihilate this entire group of people. That's some like Nazi shiz going on here. Some Nazi shizzle going on here. Let's not allow these babies to live. This baby has autism. It's on the spectrum. Probably won't be able to work. You know, let's just kill it. Let's just annihilate it. Like, what the frick? Who thinks like that? Nazis think like that. Literal Nazis. Like, Nazis hated Jewish people and black people and literally everybody except for if you're white and blonde. They hated you. Third Reich. Killing a child because, you know, it's a baby... That's... What? It's no different. It's part of my body. Is it, though? Is it? Let's let's think about this for a second. Is it a part of your body? Is the baby connected to your body? Yeah, it has... has the... Uh, what do you call it? The tube. Through the belly button. What are the frick that tube's called? I, I know what it's called. Um, oh, frick. I'm literally a medical student. I should know what it's called. I'm not a medical student yet, actually. I'm an aspiring medical student. That's what I am. I'm not a medical student yet. I, I will be. I've taken AMP1. I failed it, but I did take it. I'm taking it again. I'm taking AMP1 twice. What's it called? Ah. Umbilical cord. Yeah. I'm so smart. Big brain. Everybody knows that. I'm not that big of a brain. Anyway. Umbilical cord. You know, that's the only tie that the mother has to the child. And the placenta. The umbilical cord is attached to the placenta. And, oh man, and the placenta is an organ that is made by the woman, but it's made only in the uterus. The uterus makes it for the woman. It's not like the woman consciously thought to herself, I'm going to make an organ for this child. You know, she didn't think that the, the, the uterus thought that. Actually, let's, let's just go through the whole... Let's just go through the whole mindset of the uterus for a second here. I know that sounds weird, and I don't have any right saying that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a male. I can't say what's going on in the uterus. Well, facts are facts, and biology is biology, and the uterus is a uterus. So, we, I mean, we, I have a pretty good idea what goes on during pregnancy. So, let's just say here, okay. A woman, her whole life, she has a uterus. She has eggs and ovaries, and... The ovaries produce eggs, and the eggs go through the ovarian tubes and go out through the uterus and all that fun stuff. And the uterus, it's waiting. It's waiting for an egg that has been, um, I don't know, I don't know what the word is. I want to say fermented, but it's definitely not fermented. An egg that has a sperm in it. What is that called? Um, oh, shoot. Uh, man, I can't believe I keep forgetting these terms. I knew them just like an hour ago. You turn on the mic and you forget terms, right? It's bad. Anyway, the uterus is waiting for an egg with a sperm in it, whatever that is called. I don't want to say Germanized, but it might be Germanized. I don't know. Egg with a sperm. The uterus is waiting. And that's why a period happens, because the uterus waits for an egg. Oh, that egg doesn't have a sperm in it, so let's kick it out. 
period of time, you know, blood comes out, blah, blah, blah. That's the uterus killing an egg or destroying an egg or pooping the egg out or whatever the frick you want to call it. That's what that is. The, the cycle ended. No egg with sperm in it. we got to kick the egg out, right? The egg, the uterus is waiting. It's waiting. It's waiting. Finally, the whore, the, the lady, the lady that has lots of sex decides, I'm going to raw dog. This guy seems trustworthy. His, his pull-out game is, you know, he said it's okay, so I'm going to believe him. So finally, some sperm get into the uterus. And the uterus, it doesn't like the sperm because it's about to get to its precious egg. And the uterus doesn't realize that the precious egg wants the sperm. It doesn't realize that, but the sperm's coming through the uterus. It's being bombarded. Bombarded. It's getting attacked from all sides. The possibility of the sperm reaching the egg are so small. The possibilities are so small. But yet it happens all the freaking time on accident. I don't understand how you can have an accidental child. Actually, I do. It's it's pretty easy to have an accidental child. But there's ways to... Uh, whatever. We're not talking about that right now. That's we'll, we'll talk about that a little later on in this podcast. Anyway, uterus is waiting for sperm to go and get in the egg. But it doesn't realize that the sperm is sperm going to the egg. It, it wants to try to kill the sperm, so it does. It's like a battlefield. Sperm are dying left and right. You know, it's charging off. Captain Sperm is coming in. Goes into the ovarian tube. And you have to realize, a woman can only get pregnant while the egg is in an ovarian tube. You know, it can. that's the only time that a woman can get pregnant. The two days, three days maybe, out of the month that the egg is in the ovarian tube, that's when a woman can get pregnant. Right? And I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I only, I only learned this in college. And of course, they might have taught me wrong, because sometimes colleges are kind of bad. And I go to a kind of a bad college. It's not like the most reputable college. It's a community college, and you know they might have told me some stupid crap. But as as far as I understand, there's a moment in the cycle of the the women's cycle, where the egg comes out of the o- the ovaries, goes into the ovarian tube, and at the point in time, the period of time that it's inside the ovarian tube, that's the only time that a woman can get pregnant. And as far as I understand, it's only about two, three, four days max that a woman can get pregnant in a month, throughout a month, within a 29, 30-day period. So, like, you can have sex. You can have sex for, like, 25 days out of the month. It's like half of a week that you can't. Of course, I know. The the hormones and everything are boiling inside of both the male I mean men are horny all the time let's be real women aren't horny all the time but apparently women are horny when the egg is in the ovarian tube that's when they're like at their horniest that's when the, the hormones are going around and the uh, the friggin let's see men have men have testosterone women have shoot what's it called the women version of testosterone I can't remember what it's called it, oh frick starts with a G or something it's been a year since I take OMP1. I'm taking it again this next semester in a month. I'm taking AMP in a month, okay? I took AMP last year, and it was a year ago, so it's it's been a little while since I studied these things. But, I mean, my, my ideas are right, right? My ideas are right. I have the right idea. I just don't know the names of things. I'm getting there. I'm sorry I'm not a woman. I'm sorry. Anyway, egg is in the ovarian tube, just chillax in there slowly making its way to the uterus, and it knows it's going to die in the uterus. It knows. Unless some sperm comes and saves me, I'm going to die in the uterus. So sperm, it works. It works very hard. It gets ever so hard. It works. It gets to the ovarian tube. It finds the egg. It gets into the egg. It chillaxes in the egg. The egg accepts it. And then the egg puts a hard shell around itself so nobody else can be inside. The egg is one cell. The sperm is one cell. One sperm, sorry, one sperm. One sperm from the male. I almost said one sperm from the woman. <laughs> one cell, one sperm cell from the male, one egg cell from the woman produces a child. It's 50-50. One and one. Of course, the child has to carry. Sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm like so bad at talking today. Of course, the woman has to carry the child. But when it comes, when it boils down the formula, the ingredients for child is one part male, one part female. 
to combine two parts. 50-50. The ingredients are 50% from both. All right? 50% from both. Okay. Anyway, the egg with now a sperm, and it goes into the uterus. And the uterus is like, oh, praise God. We have an egg with a sperm in it. Finally. This egg has been waiting. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. The uterus has been waiting years for this to happen. Years. Finally. Finally, there's an egg with a sperm in it. It rejoices. It praises. And then it doesn't have a period. Why? Because it's not it's not destroying the egg anymore. It's going to keep the egg. It's nourishing the egg. The ovaries select an egg, right? There's only one. There's like four eggs or something. The ovaries select one egg. This is the egg. The special egg. This is the one that's going to save our DNA. Make a child. This is the one. Every month it does that. And every month the uterus checks the egg. Making sure that it's okay. And every month, month after month after month. Nope. Not good. Nope. Do make another one ovaries. Not good. Nope. Not good. This one doesn't have a sperm in it. It's not good. Finally. There's one with a sperm in it. And the uterus is like, this is over ovaries, you outdid yourself with this one. This one has a sperm in it. Yeah. This is the one that will carry on the DNA and make a child to reproduce. To fulfill our dreams, the uterus says to the ovaries. I, I know I'm I know there's women out there that are thinking, I'm such a dumbass. I know. There's women out there. Oh, he can't talk about the ovaries and the eggs. He can't talk about the uterus. Oh, I'm feeling so violated right now because he knows my anatomy and biology. It's no secret, sister, what's going on in your body. It's no secret. Okay? Stop trying to act as if it's some wild mystery. How could anyone ever understand, any male understand what's going on in my body? I probably don't understand what it feels like, okay? But I understand what's going on. Just because I've never gone out to sea doesn't mean I can't read Treasure Island. Like, what the frick? I gotta get some more water. If I was more professional, I'd cut it out, but I'm not. So. I'm drinking water right now, okay, so just give me a second. And, you know, produce your own thoughts to, to say out loud while you're listening to this podcast. Ah, that's good water. That is good water. Shoot. Water Montana is just goaded. Water in Montana is goaded. All right, have you produced your own ideas? You've complained about me enough and and remember if you think that i'm absolutely autistic tell me listen to the whole podcast and then dm me on instagram or on twitter and then you can be on the podcast yourself and you can tell me how much of an idiot i am i'm not looking for people who have the same idea as me on the podcast because they're just going to reiterate the same exact thing that i'm saying and i haven't even got to the juicy part yet so like just be careful um but yeah if you if you think i'm absolutely autistic sorry ah oh, I'm sorry, I can't say that. That's that's offense. That's a that's harmful to the autistic people. The autistic people that you want to kill in the in the womb. Yeah. Oh man. How could I ever have disrespected the autistic people so much? The ones that you want to kill. Oh man. M my bad. If if I was ever so stupid. If you think that I am absolutely if I'm absolutely stupid. Actually, oh wait. Stupid is another word. Oh, no, that's dumb. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if you think that I'm absolutely stupid and you think that my ideas are just so asinine, tell me. I, I want you to be on the podcast, please. Because I am stupid. I am asinine. Tell me. Please. Anyway, back to the topic. Finally, the uterus gets an egg with a sperm in it. Finally. Finally, after years of waiting, waiting, Sometimes it's not years of waiting. Sometimes it's right off the bat, and that's that's horrific. 14-year-old girls should not be pregnant. That is terrible. And we'll, we'll get to rape and everything like that later on in the podcast. But right now we're just talking about normal 
18 year old consensual sex right here okay that's what we're talking about right now well later on the podcast we'll get into some more extreme dire situations but right now we're just talking about controlled situations uterus finally gets an egg so it produces a placenta which is attached to the woman and of course the uterus is part of the woman too i'm not i'm not acting like the uterus is its own being it's part of the woman but the woman has the woman's body has been waiting for this for a long time and it works so hard you know i'm done with telling the weird little story i was telling you. it was kind of weird and I, I admit it was a little weird but the woman's body has been waiting so long for an opportunity to make a child and it puts in the work puts in the effort to make a placenta to be able to give that child nourishment to be able to feed the child because it knows the child's not going to be here forever this child's going to be gone at some point you know this child's going to be going to be out of the womb so i don't i don't need to make a permanent organ so it it makes a placenta that is able to be detached which the placenta is another organ does does the baby count as an organ of the woman no. Is the baby attached to an organ of the woman? Yeah. But is it an organ of the woman? No. The whole point of me saying all of this is that the baby is not a part of the woman's body. Is it inside your body? Yeah. Is it a part of your body? No. Like, how hard is it to understand that? How hard is it to understand that? It's not part of your body. The only analogy that I can make that kind of makes sense is if you have like a worm or something in your stomach you know something like that and I know it sounds bad because worms are usually you know something you don't want in your body like a parasite you don't really want a parasite in your body and babies by all means are not parasites I mean, that's not what I'm saying but if you have a parasite in your body is it part of your body no it's not it's 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 its own body a baby is not your body. It's not your body, your choice. Of course, like I said earlier, if it's an absolute emergent case, the baby is already going to die. It's like 100% sure the baby's going to die, and you're going to die if you don't get it out of there. Then, yeah, you can have an abortion. I'm okay with that. I'm not saying that a woman should risk her life. Okay. But, of course, having an abortion clinic... Any surgeon, any doctor can perform an abortion. Any surgeon, any surgeon at least, maybe not any doctor, but any surgeon can perform an abortion. Because, you know, it's not, it's not like, it's not rocket science to do an abortion. It's not absolutely that hard. <laughs> Having an abortion clinic instead of just a hospital just proves the immorality of this. Because, you know, if, if it was universally agreed that abortion this abortion has to happen then you just go to a hospital and a surgeon can do it but since most of the time it's just a woman who doesn't want the it's just some high school girl or some 20 year old girl that doesn't want the embarrassment of knowing that she's not a virgin well people are gonna know i'm not a virgin and people are gonna know that i had a kid and oh my gosh it's gonna ruin my life 90% of the time, women have abortion. They have parents that would take care of the child with them. Things happen. People understand things happen. You know, your parents aren't going to kill you because you had a child. I mean, they had you, didn't they? They know how children work. They know how things can happen. They went through high school themselves. Things happen. Things happen. People, people know things happen. But it's not worth killing your child. It's not worth killing someone else so that you don't have embarrassment. That'd be like, you know, my parents are going to figure out the most embarrassing, most gets me in trouble. The thing that's going to get me in trouble the most out of anything. They're going to know that. The world's going to know that. All my friends are going to know that. But if I kill this random guy in Asia, nobody knows. Having an abortion is worse than that. Because it's not just some random guy in a random place in the world. Not some random person. It's a child that has the same DNA as you. Maybe not exactly the same, but it has 
You know, it's a part of you. Mentally, it's a part of you. Not physically. You know what I'm talking about when I say that it's a part of you. When I say it's a part of you, I'm not saying it's a part of your body. When I say it's a part of you, I'm saying it has some of you in it. And you have some of it in you. Like a child and a parent do. Do you know what parent means? Parent means guardian. Protector. That's what it means. That's why they say when you're signing your name on something for your child, like a report card, it says parent slash guardian. Because you don't own that child. You don't own the child. Nowadays, people act like as if they own the child. It's, it's not your property. You have been entrusted by either God or the universe or whatever the frick you believe in. I believe it's you've been entrusted by God, but some people believe you've been entrusted by the universe. Oh, the almighty universe controls everything. Yeah. Still, even if you do believe that, you have been entrusted with whatever higher power you believe in to take care of that child. To be its protector. And let me tell you something. The government knows this. The government, everybody knows that you don't own the child. This isn't the slave trade, but the sperm trade. You know, that's not what this is. You can't have children that you're going to own and they're going to work for you as if, as if it's pre-Civil War going on. That's not how it works. In fact, abortion is worse than slavery, now that I think about it. Like, I'm not for slavery. Slavery is terrible. And I'm not just talking about American slavery. I'm talking about worldwide slavery. Slavery everywhere with any type of person. White people enslaved, black people enslaved, Asians enslaved is terrible. People should not be slaves to other people. People should have freedom. That's what I believe. Abortion is worse than slavery. Because at least in slavery, they allowed them to live. You know, slaves could kill themselves. A slave can kill themselves. And slaves have killed themselves. Why? Because it's terrible. But at least they're given the option. They're given the choice. Sometimes they're not. Some people say, well, you know, they put slaves in a padded room if they were seeming suicidal. You know, you know how easy it is to kill yourself? How easy it is to kill yourself. You climb on top of whatever shack your slave owner gives you, and you jump off head first, you land. You get someone else to do it for you. You know, if one of the other slaves, and you're just like, just kill me. And the other slave is like, okay, yeah, your life does kind of suck. All of our lives kind of suck because we're slaves. They give them a choice. They have at least the hope of being able to kill themselves someday. Which I know sounds terrible because slavery is terrible. But abortion? Here's what happens in abortion. You have a mother. You have the doctor. The doctor does an ultrasound. And they say, actually, it's not even a doctor. It's an ultrasound tech. A, a three-year degree employee. Someone who's not even near the qualifications of a doctor. They come in. They do the ultrasound. They say... Oh yeah, your kid, it appears like he's probably going to have some sort of autism. Probably going to be on the spectrum at some point. Because he has, you know, his brain looks like this and it has his frontal cortex is too small or something like that. And he has the patterns of being a vegetable. You know. But will he still have a brain and still be able to think? Yes. Yes, they will. Why don't you let the child decide whether or not they want to live? Let the child decide. It's their life. Why would you put the decision to terminate someone's life in your own hands? You're not allowed to do that in any other case in the world. No other situation in the world is it okay to kill someone else without them knowing it. It's not okay. Unless you're in extreme circumstances, like war. War is different. They're trying to kill me, so I'm going to kill them. That's like self-defense. And yes... Like I said before, if it's an emergent case and the baby's going to kill you, then yes, it's okay to have an abortion. 
You can kill the baby because it's going to kill you. But if the baby's not posing any harm to you, the baby's not posing any threat, which is the most, most abortion cases, that's what it is. The baby's not posing any threat. It's just a baby and we're going to kill it because the woman made a mistake. She slept with the wrong guy. It's not okay. It's just not. Like, I don't know why it's so hard to understand that. Because it's not your body. It's its own body. It's inside of you. Yeah. I could have a splinter. It's not part of my body, though. Do I want to take the splinter out? Yeah, because if I leave it in there, it's going to kill me. Is the baby going to kill you if you leave it in there? Some cases, yes. And in those cases, you can have an abortion. In those cases, you can have an abortion. Yes. But in the cases where the baby's not going to kill you, it's, you shouldn't have an abortion. It's not right. And like I said before, you ask any three-year-old, can I take you into the middle of the woods and shoot you in the face? They're going to say no. Is it okay for me to kill you? They're going to say no. They're going to start crying. They're going to get scared because they want to live. They're not corrupted by people yet. People are terrible. And they corrupt people. Telling them all these things. You're a potato. You have no quality of life. Then yeah, you're going to want to kill yourself if you're treated like garbage. I would want to kill myself. I would want to kill myself too if I had no hope. But let me tell you something. Everybody has hope. Everybody has some hope. Of course, if your child's a vegetable, and they can't really think, and they're sitting there on life support, and it's like, yeah, they've been here for five years in the hospital, and they're racking up some hella medical bills here. Then, yeah, you can pull the plug. Because I don't think they're coming back. That's like a circumstance where it's okay to kill your child. Because I don't even think he's there anymore when they're vegetable. And if you have a baby... And you birth a baby, and yeah, it's a vegetable, and you're just like, what am I going to do with this? It can't think, it doesn't cry, I poke it, it doesn't respond. It can't do anything, it's on life support. It can't even live. Then yeah, you can pull the plug. If the baby dies on its own, yeah. Fine. That's okay. But to actively try and harm the baby yourself, it's not okay. Don't put put the clothes hanger away. You're not going to rip it out like that. Just have the baby. I mean, how bad it will it be? I also just kind of find it funny how... Like, people act like... It's, so, it's like random chance that you're going to get pregnant. Like, oh my gosh, I got pregnant. I can't believe it. I've been having sex for the last 30 days in a row. How could I possibly be pregnant? Like, it just blows my mind. How people are so stupid. Like, of course you're going to be pregnant. You've been having sex so much. Like, bro. And they act like how, you know, I, I understand having sex. You can have sex as much as you want. But I don't understand why you wouldn't put a condom on the dude. Like, you women here. Like, how am I supposed to prevent myself from getting pregnant nowadays? I can't even have fun. There's these things called condoms. They're like five cents at Walmart. Like, you can go to any gas station in America and they have condoms somewhere. And they're cheap, too. They're not expensive at all. Like, bro. A lot of people just act like it happens. You know, sometimes getting pregnant just kind of happens. There's a lot of events that have to happen for that to happen. It's not just like it's a random chance. Like... Oh my gosh. Like right now, me, I'm not having sex right now. Am I going to have a child? No. But women act like they could just be sitting somewhere and be like, I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh. How did this happen? How did. Oh, I am so incredibly unlucky that I got pregnant right now. Oh my gosh. How did this happen? What do you mean, how did this happen? You're having sex all the time. Wear a condom. You know, the other options too. There are so many, so many uh, birth control options. I don't understand 
why nobody uses them. And then when they get pregnant, they're like so surprised. Just birth control. Birth control. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen in the first place. Don't get pregnant in the first place. We won't even be having this discussion. We don't have to have this discussion if you don't get pregnant all the time. Don't get pregnant. Don't do it. You don't want to. You don't want to get pregnant. It's bad. All right, so we also have to talk about rape cases because, you know, that's the thing that happens. It's not a good thing that happens. Rape is terrible. Like, as a male, I can actually say something about rape, you know, because I don't understand how somebody gets so desperate that they got to rape people. It's like I have never even had the thought of raping someone, not even once. It's just so foreign to my brain to rape someone. But some people have no problem doing it. They, I mean, there's like serial rapists. I mean, there's probably someone getting raped right now as you're listening to this. Somewhere in the world, right now. That's how bad this is. So yeah, it's a very big topic on the abortion. Whether or not you should abort rape babies. And the only thing I gotta say about that... It's not the baby's fault you got raped. You know, it's like... I don't know, the baby, it's not the baby's fault, so why would you punish the baby? You know, the child in your body, I know... I know, it's, it's awful. The baby, what happened, the rape, it's awful, I know. But it's not the baby's fault. If you don't want to have the child... You don't want to take care of it, then you can send it off to an, an adoption, an orphan home, you know, or give it to the government and they'll, they'll find a home for it. Like there's a lot of programs that find homes for people. And a lot of people are out there that can't have children or can't find someone that's going to have a child with them because they're, you know, ugly or just a terrible. Okay. I shouldn't say that. <sighs> Not feel bad. I'm sorry. All I'm saying is that there's a lot of programs out there that help find homes for children that can't be taken care of by their biological mothers and fathers and stuff like that. And I know rape is terrible. I know. But it's not the child's fault. You shouldn't take it out on the child. The child didn't do anything. He's just a product of cir circumstances. You know? Of course, like I said before, I'm going to say it again. If the mother has... If something's going to happen to the mother and she's about to die, then yeah, it's okay to take the child out because, you know, we don't want the mother dying. And it's okay to abort the child if the mother's going to die. That's okay. I can understand that. But if it's healthy baby, healthy mother... Even if it's rape, then the child should live because it's not the child's fault. The child didn't rape you. A friggin' monster of a man raped you, bro. He's the one that should be dealt with. He's the one that should be aborted. Like, rapists? I seriously consider that rape should be maybe a death penalty. It is bad. I've... I have some family that's been raped. Someone very close to me. That I'm directly related to. And it, it's tough. When you're raping someone, you're not just raping the person. You're raping the entire family. I mean, of course. Not physically. But the whole family has to deal with that. It's just terrible stuff going on. So I understand the pain of rape. Not necessarily being raped... But I understand the side effects of rape. And it's terrible. But it's not the child's fault. The child shouldn't be punished. Because of someone else's evil. Anyway, that's all I gotta say on that. Moving on. You have a ch You know, my mother had a, a child that she didn't want to have. And she did not have an abortion. It was way before my time. I'm the youngest. 
I have two older brothers. One's named Seth. One's named Caleb. But I actually, I actually have another older brother that I never met before. His name is Matthew. And my mother says that he lives somewhere in Washington. She doesn't know where he is, but she put him up for adoption, and he was adopted when he was probably like a year old or something, so she did get to spend a little bit of time with him, but she just couldn't take care of him because she was in college and stuff, and she just didn't have the time or the money, and it would have been she would have been unable to successfully raise him because that's what a good parent does. That's what a good parent does with their child that they can't raise. They give them a hope. They give them a chance. They put them up for adoption. They find a nice family that will be adopted. And that's the end of the story. With that mother and that child. And that child goes and lives with a parent. And like I said before, parent means guardian. With a guardian who will take care and guard the child. Because you don't own a child just because you had birth. Sorry, that sounds weird. I had to stop the recording and then <clears throat> resume it again because my DoorDash arrived. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, you don't own a child just because you had birth. Sorry, <sighs> why do I keep saying that? Just because you gave birth to a child doesn't mean you own it. It means that you have the responsibility to take care of it or give it to someone who will take care of it. You have to ensure the success of that child. That's the whole point of being a guardian. That's why if someone's a parent and they suck... They take the child away from him and give him to someone who doesn't suck. A lot of people say that men shouldn't have a say in whether or not their child gets aborted. It's it's the dude's child, too. You do realize that. Like, it's, yeah, it's in the mother. But it's the dude's child as well. The only, I mean, I could make up some dumb analogy about it, about, oh, I'm baking a cake and, you know... I, t I, t I get the ingredients and then the wife puts it in the oven. You know, that's how a child works. And if the child throws away the cake that, you know, I helped to make, I'm going to be upset. But cake is a dumb analogy. It's a dumb analogy, baking a cake. Why do we need analogies to understand something so simple? The sperm is one cell. The egg is one cell. The wife provides the egg. The man provides the sperm. Both male and female provide one cell. And then the baby is made. That's just how it works. And by all means, if you think that what I'm saying is completely off and I'm, I'm so wrong, by all means, tell me. And you can be on the podcast and we could have a discussion about this. I want to have a discussion about this with somebody. Not someone who has the same view as me. I know that most of my friends usually have the same view as me. And I, you know... Uh, it's not my fault. I mean, Montana is just full of a bunch of conservatives. So, you know, there's not very many liberals here. But, you know, if you are someone who is listening to this podcast and you have a phone and you have the ability to get on Instagram or Twitter and you have the ability to type out a message... Type out a message to me and I'll get you on the podcast. Tell me I'm wrong, we'll get you on the podcast. But a man should have... You know, if a guy doesn't want anything to do with the child, then yeah, sure. It's all up to the women. It's all up to the, to the mother. But if the father is actively present and willing to do something with the child and is invested enough to not only support the woman the mother through everything but also invested enough to be there with the child then he should have at least a say because the child's his too it's not a part of the woman's body it's just inside the woman's body and the man you know wouldn't be there without his sperm so they've tried to make children without sperm before guess what it was a disaster the children were I mean, they only lasted hours after birth. They were in so much pain. It was a disaster. For a healthy, happy baby, you need a sperm cell. That's just what you need. And the only place that you can get a sperm cell is from a ball sack. The only place ball sack, the only place ball sacks are is on mail, okay? Anyway, I'm going to 
wrap up this uh, this podcast. We I've been there could have been more that I could have talked about, but you know I think I got the gist out. The basic summary of this is: you don't own a child, you don't own the child. The child's its own person, and it is subject to individual rights, just like the rest of us. This isn't about women's rights. This is about rights for people, unborn people. This is unborn people rights, not women's rights. If this was about women's rights, why don't we just make it to where women can kill anybody? You know, a woman can kill a man if she wants to. You know, men are bigger and stronger. So if a woman kills a man with her bare hands, it's okay. You know, women's rights, women's rights. She can kill me if she wants to, and she won't get in trouble because women's rights. And she can kill the kid that I had a part in making. You know, it's my DNA, too. I contributed. It's not like it's her 100% decision. I should at least be acknowledged in the decision. At least be like, what do you think? You know, of what happens to the child. It's not about women's rights. This isn't giving women more rights. This is giving the baby less freedom. We have laws for a reason, and that is to protect the weak. If we wanted true freedom, if we had true freedom, there'd be zero laws. But what type of freedom is that actually with zero laws? Because all you're doing is living in fear your entire life. Fear that someone's going to come in your house and murder you because, you know, there's no laws, so who cares? I could, if there was no laws, it'd just be the purge. Does anybody have freedom? Do people look happy in the Purge movies? No. We have to have laws. Because the weak need protection. Last time I checked, babies are pretty weak. They don't really have very much protection. That's why we have laws to protect them. And one of those laws is that abortion isn't legal. And you know what? If the Supreme Court says that it's not a federal law, that they're going to leave it up to the states to decide... The, the Supreme Court didn't even make it illegal. They said the states can decide. This is a state issue. So now the states get to decide whether it's legal or not. And people are still complaining. Oh, but what about someone who's in a conservative state and they can't get an abortion and they don't have enough money to go... Then have the child! Have the damn child already! Oh my gosh! There is no surgeon in the world who would deny a woman an abortion if it was life-threatening for her. Not a surgeon in the world. Well, maybe not in the world, but not a good surgeon in the world anyways. If I was a surgeon, I knew how to do an abortion, and the woman, and I looked, I looked at everything, and the, the mother comes in, and she's like, I don't want to kill the kid, but the kid's killing me, and he's going to die anyway. And I looked, and I was like, yeah, you're right. You're right, let's take the kid out. He's going to die anyway. Why should he kill you with you? You know, that makes sense. It makes sense, doesn't it? But to kill a perfectly healthy child does not make sense to me. Does not make sense. You can put him in abortion clinics. Sorry. <sighs> not abortion clinics. Adoption clinics. You can put him in adoption clinics. You can give them help. Something that they need. And like I said earlier, you ask any three-year-old, any five-year-old, any little kid, do you want to die? They're going to say no. They're going to get scared and they're going to start crying because they don't want to die. If you put them in a life-threatening situation, everybody wants to live when they're that young. And why would we... Uh, I know I'm just reiterating myself at this point, but why do we stop suicides with people who think that they have nothing left, but we're going to kill people who aren't even born yet and we just decide they're not worth living? Like someone decides for themselves, I'm not worth being around, so I'm going to kill myself. That's bad. But on the other hand, we have someone who hasn't even had the, the decision, hasn't even had a choice to make a decision yet. And we're going to kill them just because we think that it's not worth them living. We'll stop someone from killing themselves, but we'll kill someone else because of the same reasons. You know, suicidal people, they think that life's just not worth living anymore. And suicidal is terrible. But abortion is even worse because we don't even give the person a chance to think for themselves. We don't even give them a chance to think to themselves, is my life worth living? We just decide for them their life's not worth living. 
bring out the clothes hanger. Let's hook him out of there. It's terrible. It's just terrible. Anyway, I got some uh, a steamy hot pile of DoorDash over here, so I'm going to go eat it. I'm not sponsored by DoorDash. I wish I was. DoorDash, if you want to sponsor me, I'm okay with being sponsored. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go eat some lunch. So It's been a great podcast. Remember, if you disagree with me, hit me up. You can be on the podcast, and I will let you speak your piece about everything. We'll have a nice, professional, calm discussion about everything. No screaming, no insult throwing, a nice, calm discussion about everything. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I hope to see you listening to the next one, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Don't kill your babies, because it's bad. Unless you really want to, because apparently it's legal in some states. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Anyway, don't kill your babies. Nobody wants to see you kill your baby. Not even you want to kill your baby. You know you don't want to kill your baby. It's a bad idea. It's just a bad idea. Don't kill your child.